Let's see how you can get Azure Databricks up and running a full cluster with uh, Azure ML open data sets installed in the cluster and with the ability to work with the uh, PySpark and Pandas compatibility layer. So that's effectively Pandas, the full Pandas API that you're used to working with, with PySpark uh, working underneath and operating with uh, the powerful Databricks cluster in a Jupyter Notebook. So let's start by creating a Azure Databricks cluster. You're gonna go to the portal of Microsoft Azure, and here I'm with the Databricks uh, service, and I'm gonna say, hey, I wanna create a new service. I'm gonna click here, and then I have a resource group already, but you can create a new one. Uh, this is the same as any other service in Azure. So I have a Databricks demo resource group that I can use here. I'm gonna put a name. Uh, for the workspace name, I'm going to say Alfredo Databricks, um, and that will just help me identify what I'm doing here with my uh, workspace. So I'm going to review and create, and uh, this is going to take uh, a couple couple of seconds, really. And uh, the deploy deployment is in progress. That's fine, and it will take just a few seconds. All right, so the deployment is complete and now we can go to the resource. This will load uh, your Databricks uh, workspace and then you can say launch workspace, uh, all pretty straightforward. And once uh, you launch it, um, the service will actually sign you in automatically. You can see that it's signing me in. I don't need to do anything. That's the, the great integration that Azure has with Databricks. Okay, so my uh, service has uh, loaded and now what we can do here is uh, go to uh, the compute section and create a cluster. You will need a cluster to operate in. I don't have a cluster right now. Let's quickly create a cluster and see how that looks. So I'm going to say uh, demo cluster is my name. Uh, cluster mode, uh, you have high concurrency standard or single node. Um, you can, uh, if you're trying stuff out, it's okay to use single node. I'm just going to use standard. Uh, now here's a gotcha because like if you want to use the new Pandas API on Spark, which gets you 100% compatibility for the Pandas API uh, on Databricks, you have to use a cluster that is 10.0 or newer. So if you choose something else like 9.1 in this case, which is the long uh, uh, long term support LTS version, that means that you will have to use Koalas, which was the library uh, that attempted to do uh, work with Spark and provide a, a compatibility layer with the Pandas API. So I'm going to use 10.0 and uh, that um, I'm going to keep the enable auto scaling. That's fine. And I'm going to say, I'm going to terminate after just 10 minutes uh, of inactivity. I don't want to spend money while I'm not using the cluster. It's fine if you terminate this. This, is, this setting is fine for testing purposes. The worker type is OK. Minimum workers, uh, two. Um, sure, max workers. I mean, it depends really on how much load you're going to do. Uh, I'm going to use four workers. Uh, that's that's also good. You also have the ability to use the spot instances. So I'm just going to click that. I'm going to save a little bit of money by selecting that uh, checkbox there. And uh, once that's done, I think that's uh, pretty good. There's some advanced options that uh, I don't need at all. And um, that sets me up for... Um, for creating my cluster. So I'm going to click create cluster over here at the top and then uh, start using it. Okay, so we are uh, back with our demo cluster. It's, it's already done. It's up and running. So what we need to do now, like remember this is a 10.0, otherwise the Pandas API doesn't work. So what we need to do is go back and uh, we can go back to the home screen, which is this one. Uh, and then we can cl click um, uh, on our workspace. And then in our workspace, find your uh, the little home icon. And uh, right here, that's me. And um, what I can do, uh, it's uh, right click. And then I can say, I want to uh, create. And I want to create a library, specifically a library. So uh, I'm going to click here. 
And then you have the ability to uh, download something from uh, the Python package index. And yes, we want that. And in this case is the Azure ML open data set. So in order to find the right package, go to the Python package index uh, website, which is uh, pypi.org and find or search for Azure ML open data sets just to ensure that you have the right name. So I'm gonna uh, select that, uh, copy it, and then uh, go back to uh, Databricks and then paste it here. And I'm gonna click on create. So once that's there, I'm going, I'm, I'm selecting uh, install automatic on all clusters. However, you can see here that no clusters are available. Why is that? Well, because this option does not work in clusters with runtime version uh, that are uh, newer than 7.0. Ah, such a bummer because it would be ideal to just have it automatically installed, right? But it isn't. So our cluster, remember, is 10.0. Uh, so we th th that's a handle link that you can uh, click if you want to see where it's coming from. So, so you can see here, I, go, I went back and uh, it's not installed. And you're like, well, uh, I really wish that this was installed. And so if I click there, or you can go here to compute and then find your cluster, and then you go to libraries, um, you can see that the status is skipped. So that's problematic because we really want this to not be uh, skipped. We really want to have this uh, installed. So. Uh, what we're going to be doing is um, it, see that it doesn't allow you to select or anything. You can select uh, install new and yes, you can say PyPI and then uh, Azure ML open data sets and install. And now it's really installing. So at some point that's going to get fixed. That's going to get improved. But for now, this is what you need to do to get it installed. So let's just wait a couple of uh, minutes until that's done. And then let's just try it out a new notebook. All right, so our Azure ML uh, open data sets is now installed and you can see it's uh, available in our demo cluster. So what are you gonna do next? Well, we're gonna create a notebook. So we can say here, create, and then yes, we want a notebook and we're gonna call it uh, demo uh, pandas. Uh, the full language Python sounds great. It's going to be attached to our cluster called demo clusters. So we're gonna click create. And then to verify that, uh, well, first of all, if we want to uh, really make sure that PySpark is giving us that sweet pandas uh, compatibility API, when I say uh, import um, PySpark, uh, that pandas as PS, and we're gonna run that and see what happens. So command took uh, less than a second, perfect. So that works. So next, what you want to uh, do is to ensure uh, that our open data sets are available. So we're gonna click here on the plus button to create a new cell. And we're gonna say uh, from Azure ML that open uh, data sets import uh, the NOAA weather um, data set. So we can say that and then we're gonna run that. It runs the command and perfect, it works. So we now have the ability to uh, work with uh, that open data set. So there you go. That's how you have the nice um, Pandas compatibility um, or compatible library coming from PySpark with full compatibility with uh, Azure Databricks. And uh, you install and make available open data sets installed in a cluster, in a demo cluster in this case, for uh, your immediate usage in a uh, notebook.